Hello everyone, and welcome to Film Sandwich. I'm Kid Ron Burgundy. And I'm Mark. And today, we are going to have a little discussion about this new R5C. Uh, we don't, we're not part of the Cool Kids Club yet. Which is not this. Right. But we're not part of the Cool Kids Club, so Canon did not send us a camera to review way ahead of time like they do all these big YouTubers. So we are going to talk about the specs that we see on bnh.com and on canon.com. Uh, to see, you know, how this camera is. I mean, we rented the R5 not long we ago, did. and we were pretty blown away uh, between the difference between the Canon R5 and our Sony FX9. I mean, we're like, do we need the FX9 anymore? Yeah. You know? But now they have this more cinema-centric R5C camera. With a C. With a C. And it, it does both. But we're they did take away some things, but they did add some things. And our opinion matters. Just remember that. Yes. So we're going to tell you our true, unadulterated opinion about all these things. And I think the first one to get started with is it's two cameras in one body. It is two cameras in one body. Um, you know, there's a little switch there that you can go from the cinema camera to the still camera, which is awesome. And there's two different menu setups depending on which mode that you're in. So you're not like, there's not this big convoluted menu of all these different things that you gotta go through just to change a cinema setting or a photo setting. You just have all the right stuff in the right place depending on where you're at. Yeah, and that's important. I mean, there's been plenty of times where I've had a client hired me to do video and stills because I actually come from a still video background. And you know, we'd shoot the video camera, take it off, put it over here, bring in the still camera, shoot the stills. But now it's a simple switch to click and you're gonna save a lot more time in uh, production when you have those assignments for sure. And if you're in a situation where you can't like flick the switch and then do it over again, you know, another take, you can pull like what, a 33 megapixel um, still from 8K video if you're in the 8K video shooting mode. That is true, which you cannot do with a 4K camera. Or you can, just a lot smaller image. Right. Uh, the only downside to that, obviously, is it won't be raw, you know, like a regular still raw image. So if you needed like a raw image, you would have to do the other take. That is true. And then the other thing cool is that it's unlimited record. <laughs> so all these people that were, when R5 first came out, that was a big thing. All the YouTubers and everybody were talking about, oh man, it stops you, da da da. And everybody's trying to make excuses for a camera that shuts down. And me coming from a video camera, but you know, I've never bought a camera that tells me, uh, oh, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, it would, <laughs> if you're shooting the 8K30, it would overheat, and uh, they kind of put a little safety in there that it would just stop recording after what, like 15 minutes or yeah. so? That's like buying a car and you're just driving it, Come right brand new from the manufacturer. Oh, you drove it 100 miles, it overheats. Okay, I'm just gonna park it, let right. it cool down, and I'll drive it. No manufacturer in the world of car manufacturing would release a car that would overheat in 100 miles. So I always thought that was odd from Canon. Yeah, you know, what? I think what it was is they just really wanted to get something that blew everybody else out of the water image-wise. I mean, if you look at Canon, they came, they, they're the ones that started like the cinema DSLR revolution with the, the 5D Mark II back in, what was it, 2008? Yeah, well, there's some, I mean, going down the history path, in 2008, it kind of started with the Mark II. And I remember that day, you had to expose that camera just right audio drift problems happen and trying to sync audio and uh, that actually started uh, Cinema 5D and now you know Cinema 5D has been around for a long time but that's where everybody used to go to figure out how to shoot um, but, but you know if you're going back you got to go back to the original if you're talking about milestones in history yeah I mean my point with mentioning that is that Canon started the revolution right uh, because you know we had video cameras and stuff, but we didn't have these full frame look with the shallow depth of field and all that, and they started that. And then all their DSLRs they came out with after that came with the video feature. But then what happened is that other manufacturers started coming out with stuff, because at the time it wasn't 4K, it was only 1080. 1080, yeah. And then other manufacturers started coming out with 4K cameras and stuff, and Canon just didn't. For years, they didn't come out with a 4K DSLR camera. Or they would come out with something and give you this feature over here. They didn't know how they wanted to be with the camera. Like, oh, still, it was, they were just confused. Yeah, they did come out with one DSLR-y style camera. But it had a fixed lens. You couldn't change lenses. And it just wasn't that great. Um, and I think when they came out with this camera, they wanted to blow everybody out of the water 
That's why they came out with the AK and all the stuff that they had, but then they had the shortcoming of the overheating. That's true too. And remember, they're retooling their entire line of lenses too. I mean, we didn't put this in our show notes, but just to be clear, like you know, RF mount is replacing EOS mount and Canon had EOS mount since the late 80s, early yeah. 90s. Yeah, the EOS mount huge. has been around for a long time. Yeah, and so Canon had a lot to do in R&D to kind of get this in rolling and get this going. Um, but you know, talking about 4K, this is a DSLR 4K. We wouldn't be here today if you don't remember the old RED camera. And uh, James Jar Gerard, I think his name, with the Jannard. RED one. Jannard. James Jan Jannard. James Jannard. And back in the day, 2004, he was the first to make RAW. Red one, and you guys probably don't even know that if you're a young film student right now, but it yeah, happened. Red Red came on the scene, and they were the first like cinema style camera that shoot shot 4K raw video. Yeah, like in 2005. It was 2005. 2005. Yeah. that's like some years ago. And remember, at the time, Sony had Cine Alter and Cine, it's the Cine Alter line, and that was only doing 1080, and nobody else could touch it. You know, and it was amazing. It kind of kicks every everybody's ass at the time as far as like the Sony and the Canons, all the world, and that kind of forced them to kind of start up in their game. And here we are now in 2022 with a Canon R5C that shoot 8K. You know, and everybody says 8K. Ron gets a little worked up about 8K. We don't need 8K, Ron, do we? <laughs> you know, it's the same argument every time a new resolution is coming out. People are like, oh, there's not enough people you, you able to watch it. There's not the screens or there's no need for 8K. But guess what happens? When an SD came to, to HD, everybody said the same thing. Then they started broadcasting things in HD and HD was the standard. And then 4K came out and now that's working towards the standard. So it's just, it's going to happen. And another great thing about having a higher resolution camera is the ability to punch in on shots. Um, you could shoot one wide shot, and then you could punch in on Mark, and then you could punch in on me, and it'd be like having a multi-camera shoot. Well, the way I like to call it is called the poor man's second camera. So in my quotes, oh, poor man's second camera shoot, all we're doing is punching in. And now, even my FX9, I can't do that. FX9 <clears throat> can't shoot 6K RAW yet, or 6K, because they haven't released the firmware yet. So if I wanted to post and deliver in 4K, the Canon R5 line and the R5C, you can shoot 8K, punch in for, you know, to your 4K crop and have a two camera effect, um, which is great. But the other thing too, I think people have to realize too, you know, this is a $5,000 camera, right? Not this one, but the R5 if it was, it'd be cool. Yeah. And you look at the top of the line Canon right now, which is the C700 series, that's $33,000, right? So if you have never, got your hands on one of those really top-end cameras and put two side by side, I can give you the kind of example. A few years ago, the Sony F5 was a really hot camera and the A2 came out too as the same hot little DSLR camera. And we did a short and I had an AB camera. And you know what? The A7 looked beautiful by itself and the Sony F5 looked beautiful by itself. But you put them side by side shooting the same human and the same skin tone, all of a sudden the F5 just had a little bit more just organic feel and life to it, yeah, and the A7 looked digital. The, the highlights and shadows would just blend a lot easier yeah. as to where in the A7 it was like more of a harder stop. Not that it was a super hard stop like some other cameras, but it just wasn't as good when you put them side by side. And, yeah, for and, sure. And that's the thing, is like you don't know how good something is until you've had the good thing, and then you try to go back, you know, the better thing, and then you try to go back. And that's when you realize, like when I well, you know, watched uh, HD for a while and I went back to standard def, I was like looking at the TV, I was like, do I need glasses? I can't right, even read it's this, all blurry. Te sure. this text on there. And sure. it was just my eyes started getting used to the sharper image and then going backwards just didn't look as great. And remember guys, Sony isn't going to like bastardize their 700 with the R5. It'll complement it. By no way is it going to replace it. I mean, that's their top of line. So they're smartest people, top tech, the most beautiful image sensor is in that camera as of now. And when you think about the line that Canon has, they have a lot of different cameras they have all the way around. And they do make their own chips. You know, I mean, Sony makes their chips too. But, you know, a lot of people get caught up in like, oh, I'm going to buy this DSLR. It's going to be the greatest camera since. Well, if it really was, then why don't, like, you know, super high-end Hollywood studios shoot on it? I mean, they do to a degree. And, of course, everybody loves an Airy, an Airy mm -hmm. camera, you know, an Alexa. But we're not here talking about that because Alexa knows what they got. And then you got to pay for that kind of Alexa name. Right. And let's talk about auto autofocus here really quick. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure it's almost like the same autofocus that's in the regular R5. Um, you know, it, I'll tell you what this. 
the, the, the autofocus, let's say, in my Panasonic GH5 isn't that great, right? I mean, it's good, it's decent, but it's not super great. Mm. The Sony the, the Sony autofocus, I mean, we did our rocket-powered autofocus test, and it held the focus, like, at rocket power speech, which, which were amazing. Yeah, see the link right here. So now, you know, this camera, I mean, I would say that the R5's autofocus is comparable to the Sony autofocus. Yeah, I would say too. Oh, and when it records slow motion, it also records sound, which is kind of nice too. So you can get all the reactions of people looking at stuff in slow-mo. And the autofocus does work in slow-mo on this R5C. Oh, that's a good one too. I mean, pretty soon, I mean, will we need second camera systems pulling focus? I don't know. That day may be coming. Yeah. Driverless cars and uh, no uh, ACs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you're on the higher end spectrum, you're, you're definitely going to still need a focus puller, let's say, if you're doing like a film, you know, or something like that, where, you know, you definitely need somebody to be there on the focus, yeah, you know, if you're rack know. focusing and stuff like you that. You still do rack focus. It's amazing what's coming out there. The other thing, too, as far as like being a, a, a film centric camera, on the R5C is we gotta mention waveform, false color, and time code. I gotta tell you, you know, you take one of those DSLRs out, beach, you're in a bright light, you're looking at the screen, you're always kind of guessing a little bit, and your mm -hmm. zebras, and knowing that you have that waveform there, and you, you know exactly what part of the image is gonna be clipping or not clipping, and false color, and time code, when you got external audio recorder, you just jam sneaking in, it just goes, it yeah. just sweet. The, the R5 didn't have the waveform, did it? Regular no, R5? No, the R5 does not. From what we saw, it did not have the waveform. So you're beholden to whatever the LCD screen looks like. And I know I have done it, everybody has. How many times you go out on a bright sunny day, bright beach, and now one, everyone, everybody's done it. Don't think you haven't. I know you've done it. And you've just kind of like, oh, exposed. You got back and, ooh, you exposed a little bit brighter than you should have. Yeah. Well, now having those tools are really going to help you keep sure your exposure is good to go. Yep, yep. And then um, let's talk about, um, your, you have the ability, it has two card slots, so you can do CF Express Type B and uh, SD um, US, UHS 2 slots. So what's cool about this is you can actually record two different formats at the same time. So, you know, if you're recording like 8K and your computer just can't handle 8K, you can record like a smaller proxy and then, you know, be able to replace it with the 8K footage when you go to export. Yeah, and that's really great, always being able to do that. Or the simple fact where sometimes a client wants to see, you know, all your B-roll and you just record a really standard 1080 and get it up online on Frame.io mm -hmm. and then they can do the stuff. You're just saving yourself an extra step in post. And I think you really got to think about that and start thinking that way because a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to shoot the best in the raw and it will be great and it's all fine and dandy. But then you get back into the world of post and you still got to encode it for somebody to review it. Well, you literally could save yourself a step in post because at the end of the day, media is cheap these days. You know, it's not over expensive. You can just shoot both and be done with it. Well, depends on the media. Depends on the media. That is true <laughs> too. Yeah, that's true too. What um, else we got to talk let's, about? Let's talk about. Um, so, if you're going to record in the 8K60 RAW internally, you are going to need to be plugged into AC power, right? A little quirk there, Canon. Yeah. yeah, like you think you think you know the R5C solved all the little quirky quirk cannon stuff. Nope. But then again, think about the engineer, right? He's thinking the engineer's like, well, we can either give him 8K raw 60 or we give him 8K raw 30. We can give him 60, but they're going to need to plug in the power cord. So they're going to you know in the conference room in the board with engineers all there, and they're all scratching their heads. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, we'll just be known as a quirky camera company. Give him the 60. So I thank you, Canon, for giving us the opportunity to record in 8K 60. Uh, raw, so I got to say thank you because I think they made the right decision knowing they couldn't fix that issue, right? And so when you think about that, how many times are you recording raw and knowing that you need to just go ahead and do that. Oh, you know what else we didn't even talk about is it does, you need power and if you do 8K raw too, it also takes your lens too, your autofocus and your autofocus goes away in your lens as well. You lose so, the autofocus. Yeah, yeah. That. So a little quirky there. I mean, B and H has a great video on that little section right there. Um, so just, just, but just to tell you, like a little workaround. I mean, you could bring a generator out. You could, you could. Uh, there's battery packs <laughs> out there that you could plug in, like AC power. Generator. Like yes. we, we've done it with flash before, or uh, other lights where we brought like a big old battery pack. We plugged the light in there, and it worked. I mean, 
you know, there's ways around it if you really want that AK60 raw internal. Now, it'll also record raw ProRes raw because the internal is Cinema Raw Lite from Canon. And then you can also do ProRes raw with the Atomos uh, Ninja uh, 5 Plus uh, recorder. And, but that's only AK30. But I don't know if you need to be plugged into AC power for that one or not. Yeah, so some of your higher end ones, a little quirky. Um, and the other thing we got to talk about too is the old uh, no IBS in camera stabilization. It doesn't have IBS. Um, you know, it, the IBS on the, the, the regular R5 was pretty nice. Um, but you got to think about too, like, you know, if you're in a professional cinema situation, like you're shooting a movie or a high end commercial or, or anything like that, and you need stable shots, you're probably not going to go handheld. You're yeah, probably going to You're going to be sure. on a stabilizer, a jib, or, or a, a slider, or something, right? The only thing that the IBIS really is good for is taking care of the micro jitters, because you're not going to do like a full-on sprint with in-body stabilization, no matter how good it is. You right? could. You, you, you could. Trip and see if you could, camera. <laughs> and it would be a little bit better than if you didn't, but... In all in all, like, it's not that big of a deal breaker for me. No, I, I got to tell you, you know, let me just see we're hitting all our it, notes it, here. It does have enhanced stabilization. Like, if you have the R5 lens, it does have uh, some stabilization on the lens, and then there is an enhanced stabilization internally on the camera, electronically, I believe, that will help with those micro jitters as well. But it's really hard to go off of specs without having the, can the camera in your hand and put it through real world tests. Yeah, I mean, having a camera that does both, but a simple flip of a switch, you're in video mode, still mode, I think is really great. Um, the features are really awesome, you know, double yeah. recording, the waveform, they're really finally listening, I think, and finally figuring out how they can make it all happen in the DSLR format. Also, we talked about audio input. You know, now I, there is an adapter that you can have four XLR audio inputs in this, I, too. It's not, I don't know if it's four XLR, but it's a four channel audio record with the XLR adapter. So, so it's I, probably two XLRs and one, two, and we'll check that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll have to look into that more. If, you, if, if anybody out there knows the actual, you know, situation there, leave it in the comments below. Um, what else we got to talk about? Well, I think the price. I mean, at the end of the day, this camera here, right, is my Mark III which is like 10 years old, right? And it takes a beating like that all the time for me because, well, it just happens that way. And so it's been my workhorse for 10 years. So when you're looking at buying your next camera to replace it, you're looking at the R5 or the R5C, you gotta ask yourself, one's a little bit cheaper, one's a little bit more. You're, that's a $600 price point. So the R5C on B&H pre-ordered is what? 4,500 bucks, rounded it up? Yeah, yeah, you know, I would say this, that, you know, the regular R5, has some cool video features, but it's mainly stills. Like, it's, it's stills mostly, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could do both, but I would say that this camera here does both pretty well. Yeah, for sure, and I come from a world of both, and right now my main focus is always on video, but I used to be a really strong still photographer too, with strobes and a whole nine yards, and I still do it today. So I think if you're a still photographer and you do table shots and portraits and stuff, R5 is the way to go. You're a video guy that dabbles in stills, R5C. And I think that's the way to go. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be into that ecosystem. And now, the thing I gotta figure out is how to sell this and sell all my EOS glass and just dump this. You know, it's, it's always one of those things when you got gear, eventually it'll be obsolete. <laughs> On, it just hurts when it happens. And well, the, R, the Canon is kind of, you know, DSLRs are on the way out. Same with the EOS lenses. Yeah, I think I heard that Canon is no longer going to make any DSLRs anymore. It's going to be straight mirrorless from now on. Yeah, I mean, when you think about DSLRs when they first got made, the only reason this whole form factor happened is because everything was already made for film and they just flipped the mirror up and replaced the sensor. But if anybody back then had a little bit of, you know, foresight, foresight they would have realized you don't need that extra space. And so, Believe it or not, that extra space in the Canon DSLR back in the day when it was filmed was light leak, and they had cameras called rangefinder cameras, which means that the rear of the lens was so much closer to the film plane, and you got a really a lot more color, crisp, and better image back in the day of film. So we're finally getting back to that rangefinder kind of way of having the Canon lenses super close to the imager sensor, and uh, the DSLR, you know, is on the way out. Right, and, and, and then there's another thing is, did we talk about the fan? It has a fan now, right? It has a fan now. LCD is smack dab right there in a heat sink. So it shouldn't overheat. People are gonna say about the sound. 
Um, yeah, and it's probably going to be a bit less uh, weather resistant. Yeah, that. and a little bit heavier. But at the end of the day, hey man, you get you get a lot of bang for the buck. I think, you know, I mean, is it a video format camera like camcorder? No, and I think people at today's you have to ask yourself, you know, what job you're going to. There's a job for an FX9. There's a job for a, you know, a Z150. You know, PMW Z150. There's a job for you know this DSLR style. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about the, the slow mo? How the 4K120 is full frame readout and not cropped? No, we did not, which is nice. So all these 8K cameras that say, "Oh, we're gonna do slow mo," yeah, slow mo at S35. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try that on for size. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I remember like, you know, obviously the Z camera is not a full frame camera, but when you do the 4K 120, it did punch into the image. I remember we did a job and you were like, why does it look like not as not as good yeah. or it was like punched in? Why does it look more punched in? It's like because it crops the sensor when it does that. And in my personal opinion, whenever it crops into the sensor, you lose some of that crispness in there. Yeah, you know? for sure. For sure. So I think my thoughts are... I was thinking about the R5. You guys know if you've been following the channel that we've we've talked about it, we've viewed it, and I've been looking at it. And now the R5C is out. Not so, quite. It's announced. So I don't know when they're shipping. You know they're shipping? Uh, I did not look at that. It's if on, you're a it's cool on, YouTube, you already have it. it yeah, it, we weren't part of the cool YouTube club where we got the camera ahead of time, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but you know, we're definitely as soon as this camera is available, we're definitely going to rent it for sure and put it through its paces. Um, Maybe oh, maybe rocket powered focus test. We might. I mean, <laughs> what I think we should do is I think we should rent the R5, the R5C, and put them head to head, and then we should rocket power the R5C. Or we could put it together and crash them into each other. I don't know if that will help with the autofocus test quite as much. Be cool to see though. That would be cool to see. Don't think um, we make that much money you know, to do that. Maybe when we're bigger YouTubers <laughs> and we're making actual money from this channel, we'll be able to do crazy stuff That's like true. that. Um, so, what else? Do we have anything else that we're going to talk about on this camera? We talked about the quirks. We talked about the two two cameras, one body. Did you get your list there? Um, I got my list up here. So, we talked about uh, two cameras, one body, autofocus, unlimited record, two different formats, waveform, false color. Four channel audio recording, time code in and out, top cinema example. I'll give you my example, so don't think this is going to compete with the C700 on skin tone. Just, just it would be that. nice to compare the two cameras together. Yep. And oh, the 45 minute, we didn't quite talk too much about the stills aspect of it, but yeah, you the know, stills the, is pretty the, cool. the stills, like we, we really covered the stills on our, uh, our R5 um, video, but 45 megapixel stills, like if it's the same as the R5, I mean, you could crop in for days. Yeah. I mean, and even if you take that image and bring it, you know, squish it in, it just looks so much better. Yeah, for sure. And the dyna dynamic range is another one to kind of look at, too, when the R5 comes out and the great ability of the RAW. I think, you know, Canon having the RAW and the 8K and the S-Log3, there's a whole other video to be done about how it grades and how the color, you can push it around before it breaks. Yeah, even when we did our uh, FX9 and R5 head-to-head, -head, you know, you could see that the R5 just had a little it was smoother and it's like like color fall off yeah and that could have been a lens thing too because we did have an r glass on that it compared RF, to the sigma we had the RF. rf glass on there yeah but um at the end of the day i tell you what it's super 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 convenient to not have to lug on a fx9 with an o'connor head with the big sticks you know i mean pretty much at that point the fx9 comes out for interviews but uh, i might be able to do a lot of b-roll shooting i mean if it, i get the uh R5C. You know, what's crazy is I was like a, a Canon person when I started out. Like I had a, a Canon, what was it, GL2 was my first camera, and then I went to an XHA1, and then I went into um, the T2i because I couldn't afford the uh, 5D Mark II at the time. And then uh, what I, after that, I went to Panasonic because at the time, like I said earlier, yeah. the Canon didn't have any good 4K cameras out at the time. And I went with Panasonic, and now... I'm thinking it might go back to Canon. Well, you know, it's interesting. Manufacturers, they go through times. I mean, Sony will kick Canon's butt, Canon will kick Sony's butt, Panasonic comes along, starts kicking butt, then out of the woodwork, you know, somebody else comes along. And, uh, you know, I think between Canon and Sony, you know, it just keeps going. But uh, videos, I think we've talked about pretty much everything we need to talk about, and now yeah. it's just time for me to go steal, I mean, get a, an R5C. Yeah, they're on pre-order right now. Um, and, you know... If you guys, you know, like what you saw here, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. 
Um, and, and please leave a comment. We want to know what you think about this new uh, camera coming out. Is it going to be something that you're going to want to get? Is it going to be something that you're like, oh, the IBIS isn't there, so forget about it? We want to hear what you guys think. Let's start a no, discussion in the comments below. We don't care what you Shut think. Shut up. <laughs> no, we, we care about care. you guys. Yeah. So don't for me, to Mark. last thought is, yeah, I'll get it probably. Yeah, he was going to get the regular R5, but now it's probably going to be the R5C. Just Thank you, Canon. Two cameras in one, and then the FX9 is probably just going to be like a little side camera. It's going to be a shelf queen. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right, until next time, we'll see you. Thanks, guys. Peace.